Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video I am going to be doing like a coming out of Dormant Sea greenhouse tour. So this is the first greenhouse tour that I'll be doing of this year. So now that it's March and basically spring, um, obviously things have started to come out that it's um, so it's starting to warm up. We've had more sun during the day, obviously the days are getting longer and I haven't had, um, well we haven't really had many frosts um, for a while so everything's really starting to come out now you're starting to see all the little dew coming out all the drosa capensis and stuff has started to come out things are starting to break dormancy a lot and obviously you've got all the saracenia flowers as well so just a kind of nice way to go through and compare from when things went into dormancy so this video is kind of like a follow-on from the video i think i did back in november time um which is basically going into dormancy so it's a nice way if uh, obviously people have watched that video to compare what the plants look like when they're going into dormancy versus is obviously what plants look like as they're coming out so it's also a good way to compare with your own plants obviously just to kind of see progress so I find that um, sometimes my stuff could be a little bit behind or even sometimes ahead based on obviously where people are in the country or even in, in the world so sometimes you might find that all the commences and stuff come out I've seen posts where other people have had them fully come out now so it just kind of depends where you are but everything does come out at different rates so don't worry too much if I'm going around and your stuff isn't started doing anything obviously everything takes their own time as well so it's just a nice way to kind of go around scan over everything with like a fine tooth comb I must admit I'll probably surprise myself during this video because you know it gives you a good time to kind of look everything individually you can see you know everything that's got flowers on so I can start making my lists and obviously just seeing new growth it's really really exciting you know a great time of year especially um, when it is spring and you know you'll be able to be in the greenhouse more and hopefully I'll be able to show the progress of the plants and do a video each month of my greenhouse tours. So I'm hoping this video is going to be quite a long one. Um, I really want to go around and scan every nook and cranny in the greenhouse. So I hope you all enjoy it. So starting off with the fly traps, I have basically repotted I think every single cultivar that I've got with the fly traps this year, um, hence why a lot of them you can see the perlite and the peat at the top rather than the usual layer of moss growth which I have over the top. Um, so I mainly did this so I could get all the divisions from um, them as much as possible. Some of them got really big and had multiple divisions on. So I separated them all and I obviously kept the main mother plant um, part for myself. And then the rest of them have all gone into spares and divisions into one big tray which I can show you later. So these are all of my obviously specimen plants, the ones that I will keep. So if I start in this um, top corner here. So this is a community pot here of largest free fly traps. So for people who have been watching my videos for a while, they'll probably remember the bunny bob container that I had, which is a big circle pot with the first fly traps I ever got in. Um, and it had this little um, ceramic um, bunny ornament in it. So that was taking up a lot of space. So I decided to basically take it all apart. It just wasn't bringing me as much joy as any anymore. So the three main fly traps from that I've put in this pot. So people who can remember, they probably remember this um, um, particular fly trap typical had a very very red center and it even had a line around the edge of it so it hasn't currently got any of those markings unfortunately I have kind of left it on the lower side of the bench it's not had as much light over the last year hence why it's just looking a bit sad at the moment plus obviously it's just gone through dormancy so hopefully as the new growth comes out you'll be able to see a lot of change in it. So I'll just take you around some of the other cultivars that I've currently got. So you can probably see um, kind of a mixed reaction really with dormancy. So even though we had the minus seven weather, um, you'll find that certain um, plants just didn't go into dormancy as much. You always find that the um, red cultivars, for example, like the red piranha or even like um, red dragon, which I've got over the back here, they go a little bit more dormant. You'll find that they will lose practically all or most of their leaves. So if I start with the red dragon here, you'll see, you can see a little bit of dead growth there. All the fly traps have just started um, getting their new growth for the year. So I've got my yellow fuse there, there's quite a few of them there. I managed to get, I think, 13 divisions off of that one or something. It's a massive clump in the pot, um, which is quite nice. That it doesn't have the fuse teeth. Um, I know a lot of them um, do not. So it's just kind of a nice yellow fuse, as it were. Nice lime green colour, very vibrant, um, but obviously just doesn't have the fuse to it. So I've got my spider here, so in the growing season it'll have the um, elongated petioles and obviously that's why it's called spider because they'll be tall petioles. At the moment they just kind of flop and curl around during dormancy. Got a cross teeth here, got my beastie boy which is this one here so you can see from last year's growth it's got the really big large wide leaves and it had massive traps. So there's one from last year as well and caught a spider you can see there. But you can all see they've all got new growth coming. Eventually they'll start flowering as well. And I'll decide whether I'm going to do flower and um, stalk cuttings 
or if I'm going to do any more crosses this year, but I'll see nearer the time, I think. So I've also got this Corrigans, which is basically a cold far, which kind of the PCL goes straight into the trap there. So you can see it doesn't have the kind of um, nub, as it were, which attaches it to the stem. So for example, on this um, giant sand that I've got, you can see here that the PCL then goes into the trap there, where this one just kind of joins into one without any gap. That's that one. There I've got two red dragons here. I had a smaller piece here and the um, obviously main mother plant there. I've also, I think, got about seven divisions of these, but all the divisions are about this big, but I've individually potted them just to see if I get, obviously, a bit better growth rather than all being stuck in the same pot. So probably my best performer from last year was my DCXL, which is another really large cultivar. So the traps, I'll see, are a little bit smaller than they were last year. I'll probably put a picture on because this actually was my largest one. So you can see here, the traps are still quite large from the older growth it got. So it's got some new traps coming as well. I really like this Triton as well, um, which has kind of got like a cup trap here. So you can see that where it just kind of joins at the base there. And then obviously it's also got the um, kind of like a fused teeth. So it's like a cup trap with fused teeth along the side. So it's quite an interesting one. Quite like this cultivar and it's got loads of new growth coming. Nice lime green colour as well. Here I've got my Southwest Giant, which is obviously not as big at the moment. This one actually, I think it's one of my crosses, yeah. So it's Southwest Giant, Giant Cross Shark's Teeth, um, which is open pollinated. So this is one actually I got a few years back, yeah. So this is sown in 2020. And yeah, you can see here that um, it did actually have some nice traits. It's the reason why I've put it in here with my um, nice specimens. But I'll see during the year what that came. I think this one had some nice teeth to it, which you kind of see the shark teeth on that trait there. But obviously this is also just a typical. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of crosses here. So another one is fine tooth cross all red. And I think I got this one back in 2019. So it's got some fine, like thinner lashes as you can see there. And it's got some nice red on the inside and like a bronzy kind of um, burgundy color on the outside. So it's quite a nice one as well. So you can see here, it's like green at top, with like a ready outside. It's quite a nice cross. Um, this is one I showed in my Venus flytrap repotting video, so it's quite a nice one as well. It's probably my favourite one that I've crossed, um, which is a UK2 cross flanks, uh, because it obviously has the flanks teeth, which you can see, very nice long lashes, and it's got a decent size trap as well. So, obviously quite a nice specimen trap as well, so you know, you see that's a really nice, healthy, large looking trap. So hopefully this year it'll produce something really nice. Got Dracula here which is the one that I've got last year, so hopefully this one will look quite nice coming this year. My Darwin, which is another great giant cultivar, which has really nice prolific vigorous growth and really large traps. My Red Piranha that I showed has obviously got a few new leaves coming, which is good, because this one I think got the hit, um, hit quite hard as well, as you can see from all the old dead growth as well. This is my Microdent, which you can see there. Um, so I really like this one as well, just because of the really nice fine teeth. I do quite like the cold vase, which have kind of no to fine teeth. It's just quite a nice trap. It's like kind of like a pink blush colour inside the trap as the year goes on. So it is a really nice kind of grower. It's quite prol prolific as well, nice clump forming as well. Got my bristle tooth here. B52, which is another large trap, so nice good grower with a really large traps. I do like the large traps within, obviously, the fly trap cars files. I have quite a lot of them, so mega traps is another example, which has nice large traps as well. Got my fuse tooth here, which kind of in the winter time goes very extreme fuse tooth, I would say, where during the rest of the year it's kind of just an even fused on the teeth. Um, labels worn off a bit on that one. But that one looks like my dentate, which I just need to write if I've got some new pens that are sun resistant um, and waterproof as well. So hopefully they'll be a bit better than the Sharpies that I've previously used. But yeah, that's my dentate there. I've got another Dracula. Um, so I managed to get two of these um, Draculas. So it's quite nice because I do quite like this one. I'm looking forward to the nice, um, you know, traits that it's got. I've seen some really nice pictures of other people's Draculas. So I'm quite excited for that one. And then finally, I've got a tiny green wizard um, and a green sawtooth as well, which are quite nice lime green kind of colours as well. And there's a paradisa over here as well. So yeah, that's kind of the flytrap collection at this time of the year.
So my favourite cultivar, um, which I've mentioned many times before, is my Flanx. So this is probably one of my other oldest fly traps. Um, I just think this was my first cultivar that I ever got. So I really enjoy this one. Um, obviously it kept most of its leaves. You can see it's got a bit of browning there. So I'll probably take all these new leaves off, um, old leaves off as obviously it comes up. Fortunately it did have aphids a little while back, but that's all been treated now. And hopefully it hasn't got any more, but I do inspect my plants regularly just to make sure. So my cup trap, you can see it's actually very pathetic looking at the moment. This one actually did get hit quite hard, but you can see just here that it does have some new growth coming just from outside the soil. So hopefully that will pick up a bit. That one actually did get quite affected. I did have two in the pot, but I currently only have one. The other one unfortunately didn't do as well. So now moving on to what I'd probably say is my favourite part of um, seeing the plants come out of dormancy, which is all the sundews drosera. Um, so basically this is my Drosa filiformis. So in the winter they produce a hibernaculum, uh, which is basically a tight resting bud and it's basically like a brown cottony kind of um, ball um, so you can kind of see where it's coming from underneath. Then in the springtime it kind of breaks that dormancy and obviously comes out. So you might recognise it if you watch my um, dividing and repotting filiformis video. This is the largest clump that I kept and as you can see it's got all the growth that's coming out of there now. So it should still be a nice specimen during the year. I've got my Drosa capensis, just typical form here. So I quite like it when the capensis come out just purely because they have so much dew on them. They just look really happy and healthy when they come out. So these die completely down to the roots. So you can see all the old growth here and they will come out of that and they'll see you with a nice mass clump once again. So even though they are weeds and they literally are everywhere in the collection, I do like to keep a couple of specimen pots just within there. I do quite uh, like the Capensis Alba as well, this is quite a nice one, I just really like how this one sparkles, especially in the sunlight, just because it's a really nice white one, so it really draws you in. So you can see probably a better example on this one. These were the old plants from last year, so they've completely died off. So you can see that they go brown and crispy, but never give up hope, so even if your plants look just like that, always keep them, because you'll always find, even if it's from the bottom there, you will get loads more come up. So yeah, some of them will come back from obviously the old plant, you can see some growth coming there. And then the rest of them will just come from the roots and they will spread. So you can see the little new bits of growth there. Just such a nice plant. I find my Alicias do usually take a little bit longer. So again, these go completely brown like that. And some of them do go brown and mushy. But you can see here where some of them do start coming back. So he's got a little bit of green on. So I never give up on the plants because they literally, I'm kind of one of those people where they're out here every single year, they survive or they don't. Um, these are always weeds anyway. So even if I lost a massive clump, I have several others which I could always replace it with, but they always usually do come back. So you can see a couple of bits of growth there. Even Capensis has started coming out. So you'll see um, probably in a month in my next greenhouse video, something a bit more exciting would happen with that one. So I've got my Drosa Helen. So I had two in this pot originally from last year. I decided to repot it and I've got one there and then the other one I've got outside at the moment in my um, spares kind of tent as they are. Okay, next is my Pygmy Sunji. So people who obviously you've watched my videos before and know me know that um, Drosa is my favourite genus and I must admit the Pygmy Sunjus are probably one of my favourites within that as well. So I keep my Pygmy Sunjus outside the greenhouse every year and I often renew them depending obviously how well they come back or how scruffy they're looking by sowing the Gamier each year. So I always um, sow Gamier from each one anyway each year just in case. Most of the time I will sell it off or obviously replace the whole pot entirely. So you can see here this um, Poltrella cross and this Eula um, is looking very scruffy this year. So you've still got actually some Gamier on now in the middle of the plant. So there's a piece of Gamier there. So basically the Gamier forms in the centre of the plant and you sow that as it's a basically an organism which you sow to create basically an exact clone of the plant. This is the fastest way to propagate these plants. Very easy, just like sowing seed on the surface of peat and you get some more. So as you can see, quite a few um, have obviously gone brown crispy over the winter time. Still lots of growth and they will actually come back. So if I show you some more, like this Palacy here, you can see here like some scruffy old brown ones that had some Gamier in the middle. And then now they've obviously started creating some new dewy leaves. So some of them obviously are looking really good at the moment. 
with some new bits you'll probably find that they're all coming up as well around the pot where they've just obviously the gamier's fallen off obviously i've got so many pygmy sundries now i've got 21 different types of them and um, i brought a lot more this year as well and they just kind of um you know you can't sell all the gamier and i can't usually shift all the gamier either so it just either obviously goes all around the plant or i chuck it but um yeah it's quite nice to obviously see some of them coming up even the worst of looking ones like the Luco Blast, you'll see most of them are from 2020. So I have refreshed all my pots this year and um, aim to obviously replace all these. I'll probably, you know, take the dead ones out and then I'll shift what good um, looking ones are left. But you can still see that obviously they're starting to come back and they will look quite nice. Obviously I'll pull out anything that is definitely dead. Dick Rose Bala, which is quite a nice one as well. So you could just see like at first I'll say they look quite scruffy and quite brown. But then you see some like with some nice dew coming, which is always nice. Even like the Manii Crossamissa, you see where they're just not looking very happy. And then you just see a couple of really nice looking ones. So eventually once all that gamma has died off, they will just start coming back. So some are obviously still quite behind. You'll see actually this has probably still got quite a bit of gamma on, which it does. So once that's off, it should just start coming back. You can sit, kind of start seeing the first couple of leaves coming. So especially here, that's a new trap coming right there. So you'll probably see that here, these are the ones that I started to sew. So most of them are sew into 9 centimetre specimen pots. So I've got the Alan Stigma here. Got a couple of new ones as well this year. So I got uh, quite a few from um, Hewitt Cooper. And I also got some just from Facebook as well in swaps and trades. So I've sewn a lot of the ones that are obviously a bit very scruffy looking. So at first it kind of just looks like green nothing. Started getting a little bit algae forming on the top. But if you zoom in and look closer, you'll see start seeing obviously all the little plantlets that have start coming up with their first leaves and all these are sewn from Gamier. Most of these I did do inside. The only ones I kind of sewed inside were ones that I brought new this year. Um, unless I had quite a lot of Gamier, then I sewed one pot inside, the rest outside purely because I just do not have space to keep them outside. I mean, um, inside of my propagator. So I just chanced it outside this year and despite all the cold weather, they actually did really well. And the gamier kind of just sat until it started warming up and it all just started coming up. So you'll see here and then eventually, once I'll see, um, I know what kind of the pots the situations are looking like, I will then keep just one of each species in obviously this main tray. The rest of them I'll then take out and replace. So you can probably see these ones here, these are the ones that actually were in my propagator. I've started to shift some stuff outside purely because of space reasons. So Oreopodon is a new one. As you see I've got quite a good result on this one. Loads of um, plants came up, they're looking really nice at the moment. And obviously I brought them out here just for a bit more sunlight. I'll keep an eye on the weather still, but I will probably just leave them in here now. They've got a bit, better chance out here than inside anyway. I always find that my stuff just doesn't like being inside as much. I just really like just growing outside in the greenhouse, not really someone who likes to faff too much with the inside stuff. But you can see here where everything is coming back. Obviously I had the Allen to Sigma, which this is my first pot. I sewed the gamma from this into the nine centimetre. And I'll probably then take this one out and then replace it with the new one. Even the Ocadin Tilus, you can see starting to look very nice and bright and vibrant as well. So that's all coming up. Or even the Platy Stigma which I was actually quite worried at one point that it would die back but it's actually looking quite nice now and some more um, thing got dorks pink there some of them are looking quite scruffy but you know we'll see how they look literally within a month they will suddenly take off and everything will look a lot better even like my scorpioides it's not looking the prettiest at the moment they are looking quite scruffy but they usually do quite come quite back and um, back quite nicely and obviously then you have quite a tall plant you see actually they've still got quite a lot of gamier on the top here so i could just do a couple of pots and sew them because i find that obviously they're nice ones to kind of give out trade and obviously sell and swap so they'll probably be available later on in the year too so at the back here i've also got my drosera trachei and drosera bonata so you can see trachei which is the same as basically filiformis um is obviously looking quite nice as well it's just coming out of its hibernacular it's got its first few leaves coming the banata, I always find that it's a little bit behind my banata var dictoma, um, which is here. So you can see actually here all the new leaves it's got. And people have remembered from my previous videos, this thing is an absolute beast and it grew, or it does grow absolutely massive. So I might put a picture over because I just love this plant when it's fully grown. Like, you know, the size of it is absolutely incredible. 
Um, but yeah, I always find that the Bonata is a little bit behind, but it will eventually grow, but I always find it's a good couple of weeks behind the um, actual Dictoma as well. So some more temperate um, Drosa that I've got here. So I've got my Drosa Intermedia here, um, which you can see it's got two little divisions now. It's originally with one plant and it's over. Um, the winter is obviously split into two. That's all coming back now. I got my Drosa Intermediate Alba as well. I really like this one. Same as obviously like the Kvensis Alba. It's a nice albino variety, which is obviously nice, bright and vibrant, especially on this tiny little plant as well. And then here I've got my Anglica. So little bits are happening. You see a couple of them are starting to come out now. Some of them are still as their hibernacular here underneath the soil. Um, but they're obviously looking quite nice. Um, new one that I've got is my Drosa Hybrida, which is a filiformis cross, I think, intermedia. Um, um, yeah, I think I'll double check that one, but I think that is right. And um, yeah, so you can see it's just come back out. I got that from Wax when I went to visit them last um, year. And that's a nice one that I'm looking forward to seeing because I got it as a hibernacular when I went up there. And obviously I've got my Rotundifolia in a small pot here as well. My Stilidium debile. Um, so you can see bits of bulbs. This is literally the <laughs> biggest weed ever. I actually had loads growing at the bottom, which I had taken off. So I think, yeah, it's not coming out anymore. But um, I had loads growing at the bottom, which I had to split and divide. Um, but yeah, this thing grows like a weed, so I never worry about if it's completely gone over winter. You can see where it all dies off. And then it just comes back from the roots. It's all coming down the side here, as you can see. But it's got lovely flowers. So this is like the um, trigger hair plant. So it's kind of semi carnivorous as it were. It's only the um, flower stalks that are actually got mucilage dew on them, where the rest of the plant obviously is not really carnivorous at all. So I've got a couple of the Trixaria. So this is my Trixaria sandersonia, which has got the um, bunny kind of ears looking flowers. New one that I got last year was my Utricula longifolia. I haven't really seen much movement on this yet, but hopefully it'll see come out very soon with the leaves. Um, it's just at the moment just a pot of moss, which I'm hoping obviously something will come out of it because I got this one last year, I think around um, October time. So I'm just waiting for something to happen with that really. Um, and then the other Utricular, which is just over here, is my um, Califarca, which has obviously got really nice flowers to it. Again, this one has died down a bit, but I have seen some new growth on that one. So I'm not too worried about that one. Just mainly the long folia, but hopefully it will come back. Over here is probably one of my favourite and most successful looking things at the moment is my Drosophyllum. So it has been years since I've been trying to grow one of these. Um, this one germinated in June last year and so far has actually been the only one that I've actually been able to get to a decent size. In the past I have been able to germinate around 18 plants. I've never really had a trouble germinating them. It's mainly just getting them to a certain stage. This one I kind of into the, integrated to the greenhouse very quickly and so far it seems to have worked. It's in its biggest, um, obviously big pot, lifelong pot, which is a terracotta. And I'm using a very sandy perlite grit kind of mix of only a very small amount of peat. But at the moment it's looking quite nice at one point over the winter. So I kept it out here all winter. And especially when we had all that minus weather, I did get very worried that I had killed it. And you know, the panic was real, but um you know it's come back it's looking really nice and obviously the new leaves it's got coming on it as well are looking amazing so hopefully i'll be able to keep this one through the summer without obviously it dying off so i just have to keep checking on its watering but at the moment it's doing quite well so here i have got some of my cephalotus so i've got my cephalotus um in um, this bowl here so this is actually one of my first cephalotus that i took from leaf pullings and i only managed to get one leaf pulling when i first did it and this is the result now this lovely um one gets actually really dark so this one i did just buy as a typical but during the year it just got so black like to a point that it looks almost like the eden black cultivar um but it was originally purchased as a typical so it's looking really nice and it hopefully will get darker again during the year but it's doing quite well in this bowl it's just a mainly sphagnum moss from when it was a cutting and you can see it's got a nice cluster of leaves new growth coming and there's actually a couple of pings in here i do believe they're just wheezers there's even some pygmy sun juice looks like a capensis might be coming as a weed there as well next to it is some leaf pullings i took actually of that one as well so hopefully these ones will have the same traits so i took these leaf pullings last year and they're actually doing really well so you can see here these red bits um, or red leaves are the leaves i originally took from it and obviously you can see it's got a couple of little ones from that one one from here and then obviously this one here actually comes from this leaf to the side which has obviously then traveled and then comes under here 
So the leaf pulling is actually doing really well. It's actually got its first trap. You can see it's just colouring up here. Um, these are probably actually done really well and established a lot quicker than they usually do. So obviously I'm doing something right on this one as well. Usually I find they're quite slow, but these ones actually done really well since I've started getting going. So hopefully I'll be able to repot these ones soon. So anyone who has been following my Instagram over winter has probably um, seen my little project as it were. So I brought basically another giant tray, which is the same size as my fly trap and dresser tray, which fills up obviously this bench. Um, originally I did my potting up in my videos and this tray was half the size. Um, so it came to about here, so I had this room for potting. Um, but I decided to basically take all that out, shift around the greenhouse, and my potting is now the other side, and then use this, because it fits actually really well, I was really satisfied with how this fit in, um, by getting another large tray. And all of my, um, well, I say all, I've got quite a lot indoors and in my grow tents outside as well. All of my um, seedlings that I've done over the last four years have been... Um, you know, split and repotted. Some of them are in community pots, some of them are individual, based on obviously how much I kind of want to see those traits. So for example, like Arthur Wheel across Asbo, I've got quite a few of these, and some of them have actually got reasonably good traits, which actually look semi like the Asbo. So you can see here, I've got a couple, like Leah Wilkinson across Inspiration. So these are ones that probably I'm looking really forward to this year. There's quite a few of those, all individually potted just so I can see kind of what the traits are. Hoping obviously some of them are looking like the inspiration. I do really like that plant, but obviously I can't really get hold of that one. So I've got obviously it as a cross, which is a nice one. So I'm quite excited just to see these crosses. Uh, L3 Giant cross Asbo, that one that would be quite nice. Uh, some my ones, so Blood Knot cross the Koffler which um, I really like the blood knock. It's a really deep burgundy kind of um, purpureous um, looking plant with a nice wide mouth, triangular shaped kind of lip. Um, and it's quite, quite st um, short in stature. I'll probably put a picture over, but it was a very beautiful plant with a really nice hood. Cross with a Lacophila, so that deep red short plant with a Lacophila might be quite nice. So another one there, a couple of them. Night Sky Cross Asbo. Leviathan Cross Monster. So this one actually, I was just one seed and I managed to, uh, that was the only seed unfortunately that um, came from the batch and this was one that I brought. However, I do now both have Leviathan and Monster, which I crossed last year and I got hundreds of seeds from. So I've sown quite a lot of those, hopefully have obviously a better variety because obviously I only got that one from seeds I purchased. Um, oh, I had enough one back there. I only thought I had one. Turns out I had two. Um, so yeah, a couple of other ones of mine, the Coffla across Linda Bart, Stax Maxima across L2, a couple of flowers here. Some of them actually do look quite nice. Um, and hopefully they'll actually give traits now they're in individual pots, allow them to grow a bit more. So some more Arthur Wheel across Asbos here. Some of them do really have the um, Asbo kind of looking pictures. So for example, this one here, which you can see and it kind of has that kind of wide mouth and coppery lid already. So like this one at the back, it's quite a nice shape and size, which you can see. So it's just going along there. Hopefully it'll be nice promising ones there. And you've got some more of mine, which you go along here. Like Snacks uh, Maxima Cross Atropaparia. A couple of nice, like, um, different, um, you've got some reds and some greens. Some of the cofflers crossed with like Oreo Fighters. So some of these should be quite um, promising, like Ruba Corpora's um, crosses I'm looking forward to as well. A couple of Tygo crosses, um, and obviously I've got my Black Widow crosses down here, which I had three selected ones, which are actually big plants, which I do have currently potted over here. They've all been cut back down, but these ones, um, there's one that was actually pubescent, which got especially really black. So looking forward to seeing how large these ones get this year as well. So a couple more like these community pots of ones that I just didn't want to individually repot. Um, some more half wheel across Hasbos. And then I've got a couple like um, Albers. There's a reptilian rose which I brought over the winter this year as well. Some more community pots. And then bringing to the edge of this perm tray here, all these ones with green dots are what was originally in this tray, which was the seedlings from my Saracen Lacophila cross um, Wilkinson's White Knight, which are the Morii. Um, they were the first um, Saracen I ever grew from seed. 
and I had 95 seedlings in total. I did a lot of research using said seedlings as well because I had so many of them. And out of all of those, I've selected these few. So I think I've got 12 here. And yeah, so out of the 95, I've got 12 that I'm, I've kept based on their traits that I'm hoping will obviously be really nice and be able to show you some really nice potential this year. Hopefully now that they're in bigger pots, they'll allow to grow a bit more and obviously I could then reduce it down if I needed to, if they didn't perform as well as last year. So anyone who has been following my Instagram over winter has probably um, seen my little project as it were. So I brought basically another giant tray, which is the same size as my fly trough and drosery tray, which fills up obviously this bench. Um, originally I did my potting up in my videos and this tray was half the size. Um, so it came to about here, so I had this room for potting. Um, but I decided to basically take all that out, shift around the greenhouse, and my potting is now the other side, and then use this because it fits actually really well. I was really satisfied with how this fit in um, by getting another large tray. And all of my, um, well, I say all, I've got quite a lot indoors and in my grow tents outside as well. All of my um, seedlings that I've done over the last four years have been, um, you know, split and repotted. Some of them are in community pots, some of them are individual based on obviously how much I kind of want to see those traits. So for example, like Arthur Wheeler Cross Asbo, I've got quite a few of these and some of them have actually got reasonably good traits, which actually look semi like the Asbo. So you can see here, I've got a couple like Leah Wilkinson Cross Inspiration. So these are ones that probably I'm looking really forward to this year. There's quite a few of those, all individually potted just so I can see kind of what the traits are. Hoping obviously some of them are looking like the inspiration. I do really like that plant, but obviously I can't really get hold of that one. So I've got obviously it as a cross, which is a nice one. So I am quite excited just to see these crosses. Uh, L3 Giant Cross Asbo, that one that would be quite nice. Uh, some my ones, so Blood Knock Cross the Coffla, which um, I really like the Blood Knock. It's a really deep burgundy kind of... Um, Perforia um, looking plant with a nice wide mouth, triangular shaped kind of lip um, and it's quite, quite um, short in stature, I'll probably put a picture over but it was a very beautiful plant with a really nice hood crossed with a Lacophila, so that deep red short plant with a Lacophila might be quite nice so another one there, a couple of them Night Sky cross Asbo Leviathan cross Monster so this one actually I was just one seed and I managed to, uh, that was the only seed unfortunately that um, came from the batch and this was ones that I brought. However I do now both have Leviathan and Monster which I crossed last year and I got hundreds of seeds from. So I've sown quite a lot of those hopefully have obviously a better variety because obviously I only got that one from seeds I purchased. Um, oh I had another one back there, I only thought I had one, turns out I had two. Um, so yeah, a couple of other ones of mine, the Coffla across Linda Bart, Stax Maxima across L2, a couple of flowers here. Some of them actually do look quite nice. Um, and hopefully they'll actually give traits now they're in individual pots, allow them to grow a bit more. So some more Arthur Wheeler across Asbos here. Some of them do really have the um, Asbo kind of looking pictures. So for example, this one here, which you can see and it kind of has that kind of wide mouth and coppery lid already. Seems like this one at the back. It's quite a nice shape and size, which you can see. So it's just going along there. Hopefully it'll be nice promising ones there. And you've got some more of mine as you go along here. Like Snacks uh, Maxima Cross Atropaparia. A couple of nice like um, different, um, you've got some reds and some greens. Some of the cofflers crossed with like Oreo Fighters. So some of these should be quite um, promising, like Ruby Corpora's um, crosses I'm looking forward to as well. A couple of Tygo crosses. Um, and obviously I've got my Black Widow crosses down here, which I had three selected ones, which are actually big plants, which I do have currently potted over here. They've all been cut back down. But these ones, um, there's one that was actually pubescent, which got it's especially really black. So looking forward to seeing how large these ones get this year as well. So a couple more like these community pots of ones that I just didn't want to individually repot. Um, some more half wheel across Hasbos. Then I've got a couple like um, Albers. There's a reptilian rose which I brought over the winter this year as well. Some more community pots. And then bringing to the edge of this perm 
tray here. All these ones with green dots are what was originally in this tray, which was the seedlings from my Saracen Lacophila cross um, Wilkinson's White Knight, which is the Morii. Um, they were the first um, Saracen I ever grew from seed. And I had 95 seedlings in total. I did a lot of research using said seedlings as well because I had so many of them. And out of all of those, I've selected these few. So I think I've got 12 here. And yeah, so out of the 95, I've got 12 that I'm, I've kept based on their traits that I'm hoping will obviously be really nice and be able to show you some really nice potential this year. Hopefully now they're, they're in bigger pots, they'll allow to grow a bit more and obviously I could then reduce it down if I needed to, if they didn't perform as well as last year. Okay, so now for the Saracenia. So again, um, Saracenia are probably my second favourite genus, as you've probably already figured out from the amount of seedlings that I've got. But I brought quite a few more Saratinia this year and some I've actually decided to make into specimen pieces as well. So for example my L3 Giant, which you can see is a massive rhizome there, has been repotted into a 1 litre. It's got its first flower with me, um, the lovely lovely tall cultivar. The um, trap on this one is beautiful, so it's starting to die off now from its last year a bit. But yeah, it's looking lovely. Some of them I've just decided to keep. I did divide quite a lot of these as well this year, but some of them, like my favourite ones, I kept. I've got Crohn's Titan, I've got a few Regelii's. Oh, so stuff really majorly to look at at the moment, um, obviously because everything's been cut back down. I'll point out a couple of new ones, like this A60, um, which is the Nigro Purpurea Alata, which is the all black one, which I'm really excited about getting. So it's a, um, I've got it from a friend, Obviously it's been a rhizome cutting which has got a few growth points on there, so hopefully it'll be a nice cluster, looking forward to seeing that one. There's Blood Knock that I talked about earlier, which I crossed some plants with. So I think I did the video on this one when I opened it, but yeah, the Saracenia Hurricane Creek White um, Clone F. So this one has been on my wish list probably the most and the longest. So to even get this one and obviously it be a decent sized um, rhizome is absolutely amazing so i'm probably most looking forward to seeing this this year just because i just want to sh see that sheer white of obviously the well-known hurricane creek so especially the clone f is one of the whitest clones you can get so very very excited about that one so got a couple others from um my friend as well which some of them are his own crosses so looking forward to seeing the characteristics on some of these so you can probably see at the back i've got some two liter pots potted up so this is my Adrian Slax Maxima which has got a couple of flower stalks I decided to take one rhizome cutting off of that this year and then keep the rest as a specimen pot same as like my Brooks hybrid I was going to take some um, bits off of it but obviously this one got so tall last year and was uh, such a breathtaking specimen that I decided to just keep it let it grow and I'll see hopefully within a few years it'll fill up that pot um, I've got a couple of talks and stuff like load, um, lined up this year, I'd love to do some shows, so having some specimen pieces should be quite nice as well, just to keep at the back of the greenhouse, obviously just in case you need them. So you can probably see as I'm scanning through here, loads of things are starting to get flowers, it's my Adrian stack, it's got two flowers and two obviously um, rhizome splits here now, got my asper at the back there, oh I've got a Flava atropaparia lidless, so um, not, I, I guess I'm in two minds about lidless varieties. Um, I do like your typical, well, um, nice looking um, Saracenia. I'm not so much a fan of all the weird and wonderful, little bit like the fly truck cultivars. I don't really like the um, weird shaped ones. But I thought I would just um, give it a go. Might as well grow it to, as obviously I'm a collector as well. So obviously just kind of uh, seeing what that will turn into. It's a decent size as well. So should be nice just to see what it will look like as obviously the year goes on. So I've got a Lacophila burgundy here as well, which I'm quite looking forward to, which is L57. Vintner's Treasure, which is another one that I got with the Hurricane Creek F, um, which obviously is only a small little um, rhizome, but I am really looking forward to see that one in a couple of years when it's grown up. Um, a couple of ones, Lacophila Alba, so that was a really nice white one that I had last year. Got a wax black, so this is like a peppery, but it gets really, really dark, so another nice one. And I'll see another decent sized kind of um, plant as well. Got my Leviathan, Leah Wilkinson there. Couple bits of backs, flowers, loads of pots. Like there's my Lacophila um, Tarnop there, which has got the double headed flowers. So you can see kind of all the flowers that are just coming on it. 
Another nice one that I got from a friend, which is Leah Wilkerson Cross, which got very tall. I even got my first minor, which, you know, it's quite funny because I have got so many Saracenia now, so many cultivars, but I've actually never owned a minor and never had a minor cross. Personally, I've never really liked them, which seems really weird, um, but I thought, you know, I've come this far, I might as well get one. So I decided to get one, and the seller was really nice and decided to give me two little split divisions. So I've got this one, and I do have another one, which is in a different tray. I got my Chanel's Ghost, which I could just see a flower coming out of there. So this is the first year as well my Saracen Lacophila hectrophylla has flowered and I love the lime green flower because obviously the Lacophilas have red flowers but as this one is anthrocytin free which means it doesn't have any of the um, red veining in it it's just an all green flower and I think that looks really nice I didn't even spot it at first but that's going to be a nice one to get when it comes out. Got Timothy King, a couple other Regelli eyes at the back, a few flowers, a few stiff, um, Slopers there, a couple of crosses I got from Wax when I went to visit them. So, like this by Elsa's nice white one that I got from Wax, which was nice, got a flower on it. Got the wild flyer, fire here, which is a nice one to go across with a tapestry. I got my Morii dark form, which is a really nice black um, kind of looking one as well. I have to put some pictures up as I'm going through here just so you can kind of see in comparison what they look like during the growing season. And then moving down onto my lower tray. So yes, I've got this bad now that I kind of have to wrap around my Saracenia collection. I've got my Darling Tonia here, which very happy with this. I split this actually I'm, um, this year. So I've kept obviously the main um, part of the plant. I think it's got two flower stalks coming now. So you can see one here and one here. But I split this off and I think I've got five divisions of this. A um, couple I've already sent out to some new loving homes. But yeah, I do really like the Darling Tony. I've even put a division of this in my bog, um, outside in my bog barrels. Hopefully that'll do quite well as well, because I know they like obviously having cooler roots, so being outside should definitely help. So you go around here, I've got flowers. I've got maroon there. There's the other minor division I was talking about. A couple of other crosses. Even got uh, my parrot pictures here. Another cross of mine. I've got my first um, like Pogonia, which is like a um, terrestrial bog orchid. So these ones obviously fully die down. You can see where the old growth was there. So hopefully that should come up soon. I'm hoping one day to put that in my bog as well. Just want it to establish a bit more. Um, sad looking Adelaide, that one was inside. So I brought this one outside because it just, again, was kind of neglected on my plant shelves inside, which didn't get enough light. So in here it will definitely pick up a bit. We've even got some... Um, pings which have been out here all winter and they just kind of um, form that kind of succulent winter dormancy stage and then that's starting to come back as well and kind of just as my dumping ground bit as well with just some odds and sods which I'm to come back there's one of the filiformis um, divisions from that video as well and the rest of them I think I've got a couple here a couple outside which I'll show in a sec so on the lower side I always kind of use this as my kind of everything slash dumping ground place I don't really usually show it in the videos just because there's nothing really to look at but I'll kind of just show here that I have sown a few seeds so more of my um, Saracenia crosses got some Anglica over there I've even done some peat free trials um, using with the Pygmy Sundew just because I had so much Gamier so I've got some um, milled pine bark there some just sphagnum moss and even the koi chunks so these are just kind of random trials that I'm currently doing so if I look closer you can actually see that the Scorpioides are actually still growing and they're still green which is good whole shade of the cross and Eustachula some of them look a bit brown but you can also see some of them actually are growing so just kind of seeing what's coming out really um, and then the Oppidin tiles, which I think is um, a mixture of um, Koya with a top layer of fine peat, just because I found it hard sewing the gamme on top, especially for the Oppidin tiles, which is very small. But I'll just see what kind of happens during the year. It was just kind of a playful experiment, nothing really too serious at the moment, just to kind of see with the peat free stuff that I'm doing. Some of them, the rest of my crosses um, are, well, most of them are here. I think 45 of them are here, the rest of them are all outside. Um, so these all will be going to hopefully new homes this year. Um, I just need to obviously select them when they start growing through. I will likely um, list them just so I can obviously show the traits when I'm selling. Um, got my dresser filler formis, um, which I did from the videos as well. So you can see that they're all just starting to come out now. That's probably a good example here of the hibernacular in the winter. And obviously you can see the ones actually come out a bit more, but it'll go from basically that to looking like this.
So here I also got a few of the Saratonia rhizome cuttings that I've taken. So I've got like my Aurophila Sand Mountain, my L2, um, Aurophila Cross Walker since White Knight, a couple of Lacophilas, a Lata Pubescent, All Green Flava, Sax Maxima, Joanna, and another um, a Lata Pubescent. So um, I've done a video on this, I just haven't um, had time to edit or, or even look at it yet. But um, I thought the Rhizome Custom would be quite good because I did obviously a lot of repotting this year. And eventually, um, I'd say within a couple of months when spring actually starts getting in the way, we'll um, hopefully see loads of um, little Saracenia um, spikes coming out of all the rhizomes. So this is a great way of propagating. You get results pretty quickly as well. So I mentioned to you earlier about the grow tents I had. And basically these are used, I've got two of them. And they're quite large ones. They're as tall as my greenhouse. Um, I can fit about four trays of stock in them. Um, of each, I've got about eight trays of stock. And I basically use this as all my spares and kind of um, little bits for selling and stuff like that in here. So you can see all of my um, fly trap cultivar divisions are all in this one tray here. So you're looking for quite a nice variety of different things. Hopefully they'll see all grow on and come on a bit more. Then next shelf down, I've got all my typicals and I've got a whole tray of typicals because there's just so many of them. So again, I've even done like there's a bit of coir trials at the back there struggled a bit over the winter because of the cold that's coming out and then some of the ones I also reposted in my previous video and I've got a couple more like Saracenia bits uh, this shelf here is literally just a dumping ground I'm just going to see what's come back and then all that will probably you know come back and um, I'll either divide or just repot or even chuck off so if nothing comes back at all in my second one, I've got all my Saracenia um, divisions. Obviously, you can see Linda Butt, got my Pender County, Sussex County, more Linda Butts, um, Flavas, um, Morio Dark Forms. So all of these are nice sized divisions. Some of them are obviously double divisions, some of them have got flowers on. So these are all just spares. These are all the Darling Tonya that I kind of took. I've got some runners here, which are starting to come through. Some bits of um, more runners there, um, more Joannas at the back. And then I've got a couple of maroons in here some of them again in peat free kind of mixes so that's coir chunks the other one i think is in the pine um, milled pine bark um more filiformis is in here and some smaller kind of visions um darling tunny at the back there. that's quite a nice one and obviously the purple ears and then some more of my um the cough across moria kind of um, divisions too Next level down, I've got all of the um, Gamio that I sewed additional, so I hopefully I'm going to use all these as spares. So I think I've got about, some of them got five spares of each, um, all Gamio sewn, and um, I'm hoping to obviously send these as pots. So you can see here, they're all starting to come up now. As you scan through, they've done quite well just out here, it's like a nice dumping ground. That one's got loads of dew on there, Palacy, that seems to do quite well. So yeah, hopefully these will all be available in a few months' time, and that will hopefully clear me out some more space. Okay, so you could see, obviously, I've uh, basically shown you the good and the kind of ugly at the same time. So um, the grow tents I got last year, I don't know if I've actually mentioned them or seen them in any of my videos yet. I might actually um, put a picture over just to kind of show what, you know, they look like in, in comparison to my greenhouse. So I got those basically because I wanted to take loads of divisions. I wanted to repot all my Saracenia seedlings. I, you know, I really want to do my Saracenia crosses. But I just didn't have the space, even this, uh, my, my greenhouse is only eight by eight, um, six by eight foot. Um, unfortunately, um, because I don't have my own place, I have only got a small corner of the garden and I managed just about to fit these um, bits um, or the grow tents on the greenhouse with um, by digging up a border. I originally had a border that had loads of flowers and plants in, but I sacrificed normal plants for carnivorous plants because that's me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got those and obviously I've made quite a good space on here but I just have to be very careful with obviously what I'm buying as well because obviously space but I'm hoping with all these spares that I've got obviously I'll be able to do trades and swaps and obviously shift some as the year goes on which allows even more space for me obviously towards the end of the year kind of just you know it funds what I'm then going to buy and bits of the greenhouse um so yeah it should be quite nice but I really hope you enjoyed looking around it just really really excites me just to kind of look at everything I've got so many flowers so soon I'll be making my list about crosses that I'm going to make Obviously, and then just planning for the year once the growth starts. Obviously, it also means that 
warmer days obviously longer days as well so the acid just come out here sit out here listen to the birds and stuff it is really nice and it is quite therapeutic just to see the plants and obviously not be cold and run in here and just to make sure everything's alive and then run back out again because it's too cold so yeah it will be nice just to kind of see how everything progresses through the year so thank you all for watching this video and i hope you have a great day